Hey, what's up everybody? Video 44 coming at you with another video. All right. So, winging it. Only got about 10 minutes to talk because I'm walking back to the hotel. But for right now, I just wanted to give a quick uh, basketball video. Just, just talk a little something. Uh, Luka the Don, man. He put up some crazy video game numbers last night on my uh, fantasy basketball. You got me 125 points in one game. That's like enough for two players to have had phenomenal games. I'm not sure how you rank him right now. He's going to have to win a championship. Of course, you got players like LeBron James, who's still in the league, Giannis, Jokic, you know what I mean? Guys that you consider to be the best player in the league. I'm not so sure Luka the Don didn't just step himself right into that category over the past couple of weeks with Kyrie being out, man. A lot of people are going to say he's already been there. I could argue I agree with you. He's already been a top player. But the stuff that he's doing right now. You know, I saw a commercial with him <laughs> and Michael Jordan a couple days ago. Actually, it was yesterday they played, during the game. I'm sure some of you have seen that commercial. Uh, Michael Jordan's coming through and everybody's excited. You see Zion's like, oh, my God, Michael's here. And I looked. They only flashed it for about a millisecond. But I looked at Luka Dodon. He was standing next to Michael Jordan. He ain't look impressed. He ain't look impressed at all. He didn't look like he was moved by the presence of MJ. And, and the only thing I could think of is these are both goats. Just Luca's just getting started. But Luca probably think he better than that dude. <laughs> he probably think, yo, if you was if I was around when you was doing all that, you wouldn't have got all that. I think that's the vibe that I took from that little millisecond of looking at it. Like all these other players are moved by you, but I think I'm on your level. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm just starting crap. But I'm telling you, he ain't looking impressed by Michael Jordan's presence at all. And I'm telling you, with the numbers that this kid is putting up right now, and a couple with the fact that he's barely, what, 24 years old or something like that. And mind you, I don't think Luka Don is the greatest conditioned athlete. He look like he go home, sit, sit down, play video games, drink some beers, eat whatever he want, and then come out there and does this. If he were to get in the type of shape the highest level of shape that he could get into. If he would have like go crazy and want to work out like a madman. The stuff that he would be capable of doing at his highest conditioned level would be legendary as it gets. I really believe that legendary as it gets. And so for me, I just don't know. I don't I don't know where Luca lands. But when you put up 50 points two blocks three steals 15 assists or something like how the hell he even have time to do all that he accounted for like 82 points in yesterday's game against the phoenix suns now the phoenix suns i'll tell you this the phoenix suns are a team that in my opinion their only function to utilize three specific stars and they need all those stars to have big games every night for them to make any sense at all as a basketball team. When you remove one of those stars, that team is not good. When you move two of those stars, that team is terrible. You move all three of those stars and they don't even have a team. That's not, it's not even a basketball squad. They Detroit. And so I don't look at Phoenix and judge them at all until Bradley Beal either comes back or until they restructure that, that team to not be functioned that way. But as of right now, that team is built for Bradley Beal, KD, and Devin Booker to get 28 points a night. And that's the only way they're really supposed to be winning games. And since we haven't seen that on the floor at all, just like the Brooklyn Nets, they're not, they're not really anything. They're nothing at all. I don't, I, I'm surprised when they do win games. That's how bad it is right now. And if I'm Kevin Durant, I was listening to, to, to Ticket TV talk about Kevin Durant possibly wanting out demanding a trade soon i don't think he should have to i think that i think the phoenix Suns should probably want to move him not to say that he's in in an isolated situation deserves to be traded absolutely not he's playing amazing but his amazing does not translate to anything because they need bradley bill to finish the team and bradley bill is an immovable piece because of his contract and the fact that it has a no trade clause on the couple with the fact that he's injury prone and everybody now knows that he didn't really have that big of a market last year. But Phoenix wanted to go all out 
and try to bring themselves a super team. Ill-advised as hell, but they did it. And this is where they're at. So it's like, if you're not going to move Devin Booker, you probably can't move Bradley Beal. So in this situation, Kevin Durant is the movable piece. You can still get a lot for Kevin Durant. You could probably get a fleet of young players. You move him to Golden State, you could probably get you a Kaminga, maybe get you a Pazimski, you know, possibly get yourself Clay or whatever. You know what I mean? You could get a nice return and kind of set yourself in a position to have more tradable assets to kind of diversify a bit better to keep building around Devin Booker rather than to just move forward with this three-contract situation that can't be fixed unless you move one of those two guys. Because I'm telling you right now, Beal ain't going to be worth nothing. You can't move that. Nobody wants a no-trade contract with an injury-prone player attached to it that's aging. Hell no. Nobody's going to want that. You shouldn't have wanted that. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what it come down with Phoenix. That's just a, that's an immovable contract. So what are you going to do? You want to get yourself Kevin Durant, return, whatever could, could could he could garner you in return, maybe some picks or some players, whatever you want. You know what I mean? He can get you pretty much whatever you want still. Um, or you can move Devin Booker. I think um, Grayson Allen, the way he's been playing, he's become more of a valuable asset in your uniform. I think he's more valuable now than he was when he got there, but that's not enough to get you nothing. He still kind of got that that college reputation attached to him where he was going around doing stuff that could probably hurt his team you know not that he's acted like that in the pros but people ain't forgot that you know a person like myself ain't forgot that so I'm not gonna want to trade for him like he's some type of great player if he reverts back to his old ways we got another Draymond type situation so it's like what kind of asset is he even at his peak so this is the type of stuff I'm like a Phoenix they looked pretty good if they could keep everybody healthy, all three of those guys. The role players that they brought to their situation, they fit the three superstar score situation. Maybe maybe you get yourself a point guard. I don't think I would have let go of campaign. I'd have kept him just so that my cohesiveness could look better so that I'm not relying upon Bradley Beal or Devin Booker to play point guard. But like, aside from that, you can't really get the most out of that team unless you have that super efficient scoring trio on the floor at all times. Now, why they banked on that trio being healthy at all times is a big mystery to me. I don't know why the hell they would even think that was going to work. But if they did have those three guys out there, I expect them to win a lot of games. I expect them. But it was a bad bet to begin with, as we're saying. And with it being a bad bet, now it's not working out. And I think they're in no man's land hell, just like I was saying in the last video about my Lakers. That is exactly where they are. No man land hell. So just looking at the Phoenix Suns and the Dallas Mavericks who played two games last night, there's two teams going in the opposite directions. And if I'm the Phoenix Suns, I'm not happy with the direction it looks like I'm going in, despite having these two superstars on my squad. I got a third player who's not a superstar, but is getting paid like he's a superstar, has a no-trade clause like he's a superstar, and as a result, probably going to be hard to get rid of unlike a superstar so you got to move something that's what i got to say but i'm back where i'm going to be and i'm probably have another video for you guys i got a basketball on my mind so video 44 thank you all for watching